Hello, how are you guys today? Good, good, great to hear. Um, as um, Dr. Met just talked about, um, I'm a White House advisor, I'm a climate justice activist. I climate struck in front of the White House for over 87 weeks. And now being in public office and making sure that youth representatives are actually taken um, into account at the policy level, I'm here to talk about our to-do list. And especially now in this context, it's one day after Martin Luther King's birthday. It is right now a few weeks after the first anniversary of the January 6th insurrection. And I like to talk about the fact that in this present moment in the world, we must continue to honor both our legacy and usher in the future. And that means that our to-do list must be looking both backwards and forwards. When we talk about the climate crisis, we have to break it down to three parts. We have to talk about the past, the present, and the future. The past is what has happened over the past century of continual er erosion of our institutions from the residue of coloni colonialization and racism, and that holds back so much progress because of that legacy. The present, where we're trying to combat that past and give visions of the future, and actually ushering in that next decade of action where in 2050, 2051, we'll look back and say, did we do enough? Did we achieve the goals that we set out here? Did we actually meet them or do we fall critically short? Right now as a movement, what we've seen is that 7.5 million young people around the world organized a mass movement from the streets, literally from posting on social media saying, I want my voice to be heard and millions of other young people saying, I need my voice to be heard too. And it was then in 2017 that we finally felt like we had some agency. It was young people saying, we're tired of being just a statistic on someone's speech. We're tired of just being something that we're mentioned to in a slideshow, but we want to be actually heard. Because young people, we have a different perspective about the world. When we think about our to-do list, our to-do list is about what do we actually want to see. Our to-do list is what do we want our future to look like. And that comes down to ending all fossil fuel subsidies. That comes to making sure that even in Dubai here, we have the inclusion of women and LGBTQ people. It is coming to how we talk about the future of young people saying climate justice is not just about slapping a solar panel on the climate crisis. It's about looking to the people that are dying right now. Climate change is often talked about as an infrastructure issue, but it's about an empathy issue. We need radical empathy. That's the to-do list that we need. My to-do list says we need to build on the legacy of the civil rights movement. We need to build on the legacy of so many movements that our elders ushered in. And as young people, as youth, to envision that future for us. Right now, my to-do list says we need radical empathy to end the disease of racism that, that has seeped into every socioeconomic system that we see today. Even at the United Nations, we see that there's often talk about frontline communities, marginalized communities, women, black people, brown people, but we never talk about what is actually needs to be done. What needs to happen is reparations for, for centuries of slavery. We need reparations for climate infrastructure to be built. We need reparations for the construction of public health infrastructure. Because right now, even in COVID-19, we talk about pre-existing conditions. One pre-existing condition is homophobia. One pre-existing condition is racism. One pre-existing system is sexism. And we never talk about that. We only talk about the obvious pre-existing conditions of asthma or lung cancer. But the most potent ones are often the ones we can't see or feel or hear, but it's present every time that we wake up. Every time I wake up, I'm a gay black man. Every time that a person in Bangladesh wakes up, they're living in that country. It's not just a PowerPoint for them. And we have to understand that their to-do list is so much more real. It is so important that in these next eight years, we understand that we must live up to our ideals. These are not just goals, this is about survival. This is about what do we want our planet to be? Do we want it in the next 100 years to be only for the rich and famous, for only for the people that have access, only people that have privilege? No. Right now, the earth is having a reckoning. It is saying no more do we want injustice to pursue and be allowed to happen everywhere and anywhere, because that was the status quo. It was the movement of Fridays for Future that said enough is enough. It's not just about ending climate justice, ending cl the climate crisis. It's about making sure that intersectionality is in our solutions. Intersectionality is a great word that we use all the time. We talk about the fact that 
We need to make sure that we have women and people of color at the table. But at these tables, in these discussions, what I have seen as a White House advisor is that they, they put that title for me. They give me that amazing resume boost. But really, they have me in the room and they don't listen. Because now what my recommendations were in 20, March of 2020 haven't been implemented until March of 2021. The ones that were made in March of 2021 will not be implemented until March of 2022. That's an entire year of inaction. Every single day, President Biden makes decisions without consulting a young person, without consulting over 20% of the population. One in five young people, one in five votes in the United States was by a young person. That is a constituency. The world is young. The world is youth. But oftentimes, we don't even talk to youth. We give them a platform. We give them a little bit of space. But what we're demanding right now with this platform that I have here is to tell you that we need to end subsidies, that we need to hold fossil fuel industry accountable. We need to stop having them sponsor our events and tell us what needs to be done. We need to have them stop being in our conversations and giving us money and saying, oh, we're going to pay you off so you don't do the real work. That's what young people want. We want real change. We're tired of real great slogans and hashtags. Hashtags mean nothing. We need policy. We need legislation. We need action. Because we've been demanding it for years, I've grown up watching adults, watching you guys give great words. And I was fooled by that. I had a false sense of security saying adults will have it handled. They'll have it all settled for us. But as I grew up, that naivety faded. That hope faded because there was no action to lead it. Hope is a, is a muscle that we have to flex. It is an actual legislative body that we have to look to. Hope is something that is meaningless without action. Hope isn't something you can grapple onto and hold for dear life. It's something you're going to build. And young people are here to build it with you, but we need to be respected. We need to be having tools of implementation, not just platforms to say words like this. Because words like this mean nothing. They fall dead on the communities that are dying right now. Every single day, someone is dying because we refuse to take action. It's not that we don't have the willpower. We are making the active choice to continue to kill our planet. And we find that every single young person on this planet understands the severity of this issue. And we're looking to you to make the decisions and to make sure that change is delivered because it's demanded and it's needed. Thank you. Thank you.